Welcome to the presentation of the STM32H7 Master Directory Memory Access Controller, or MDMA. It covers the main features of this module, which is widely used to handle data transfers. The Master Direct Memory Access, or MDMA, is optimized for data transfers between memories since it supports linked list transfers that allow performing a chained list of transfers without the need for CPU intervention. This keeps the CPU resources free for other operations. The MDMA controller provides a master AXI interface for main memory and peripheral registers access, system access port, and a master AHB interface only for Cortex-M7 TCM memory access or TCM access port. Each of the DMA controller channels provides a unidirectional transfer link between a source and a destination. Each channel can perform single block transfer. One block is transferred. At the end of the block, the DMA channel is disabled and an end-of-channel transfer interrupt is generated. Repeated block transfer. A number of blocks is transferred before disabling the channel. And linked list transfer. When the transfer of the current data block or last block in a repeat is completed, a new block control structure is loaded from memory and a new block transfer is started. The MDMA also features incrementing, decrementing, or non-incrementing or fixed addressing for source and destination. The size and address increment for both source and destination can be independently selected. MDMA is useful to collect data from other DMAs, DMA1, DMA2, and VDMA, and make data available to the CPU in the D1 domain, in DTCM or AXI SRAM. DMA linked lists are used to perform a set of DMA transfers without the need for CPU intervention. Can be used to prepare data for other DMAs and then set the DMA configuration to start transfers. It is used to support scatter and gathering. This means that the source and destination areas do not need to occupy contiguous areas in memory. The source and destination data areas are defined by a series of linked list descriptors that control the transfer of data blocks. It can be used to pass data to a JPEG decoder and DMA2D to accelerate image drawing. The MDMA supports incremental burst transfers. The size of the burst is software configurable, up to 128 bytes. For larger data sizes, the burst length is limited, as to respect the maximum data burst size of 128 bytes. For example, 16 by 64 bit or 32 by 32 bit. For the TCM memory accesses, the burst access is only allowed when the increment and data size are identical and lower than or equal to 32 bits. The size is selected using the TRGM 1 to 0 trigger mode selection field. The size of the data array to be transferred for a single request will be the buffer transfer size when the TRGM or trigger mode equals 00. zero. The size of the data array to be transferred for a single request will be the block size when the TRGM trigger mode equals 01. The size of the data array to be transferred for a single request will be a repeated block when TRGM equals 10. The size of the data array to be transferred for a single request will be a complete channel data until the linked list pointer for the channel is null when TRGM equals 1-1. Each channel has programmable priority. If two channels have the same programmable priority, the lower channel number has higher priority. An arbiter manages the MDMA channel requests based on their priority. When MDMA is idle, and after the end of each buffer transfer, all MDMA requests, hardware or software, are checked for all enabled channels. 
A buffer transfer is the minimum data size to be transferred by the MDMA without starting a new arbitration between MDMA channel requests. In case of a block transfer, after transferring an individual buffer, the MDMA will enter into a new arbitration phase between new external requests and internally memorized ones. If no other channel request with a higher priority is active, a new buffer transfer will be started for the same channel. Higher-level MDMA requests will not be blocked for more than a buffer transfer period as the channel arbitration is performed after each buffer transfer. Two data array size parameters have an impact on MDMA and application responsiveness. 1. Buffer transfer size. Data transfer lengths which are uninterruptible at the MDMA level from other channels requests. It is the length of the data to be transferred on a channel before checking for MDMA requests on other channels. 2. Burst size. It defines the maximum data transfer length which may be uninterruptible at the bus arbitration level. It is the length of the data transfer which may be transferred in burst mode. It may block other masters from gaining access to the bus. It is important to select the correct burst and buffer transfer size considering the real-time requirements for other MDMA channels and masters. A buffer transfer is the minimum logical amount of data, up to 128 bytes, which is transferred on an MDMA request event on one channel. An MDMA buffer transfer consists of a sequence of a given number of data transfers done as single or burst data transfers. The number of data items to be transferred and their width, 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, or 64-bit, are software programmable. The length of the burst used for data transfers is also programmable independently. After an event requiring a data array to be transferred, the DMA peripheral sends a request signal to the MDMA controller. The MDMA controller serves the request depending on the channel priorities. The request is acknowledged by writing the mask data value to the address given in the mask address when these registers are set. A block is a contiguous array of data, up to 64 bytes, which is transferred by successive buffer transfers. Each block of data is defined by the start address and the block length. When a block transfer is completed, one of the following three actions can be executed. If the block is part of a repeated block transfer, the block length is reloaded and a new block start address is computed, based on the information in the CXBRUR register. If it is a single block or the last block in a repeated block transfer, the next block information is loaded from the memory using the linked list address information from the MDMA CXLAR. If it is the last block which needs to be transferred for the current MDMA channel, MDMA CXLER equals zero, the channel is disabled and no further MDMA requests will be accepted for this channel. The block repeat mode allows repetition of a block transfer with different start addresses for source and destination. When the repeat block mode is active, Repeat counter is not equal to zero. At the end of the current block transfer, the block parameters will be updated. The BNDT value reloaded and SARDAR values updated according to BRSUM, BRDUM configuration. And the repeat counter is decremented by one. When the repeat block counter reaches zero, this last block will be treated as a single block transfer. The linked list mode allows loading of a new MDMA configuration, CXTCR, CXBNDTR, CXSAR, CXDAR, CXBRUR, CXLAR, CXTBR, CXMAR, and CXMDR registers from the address given in the CXLAR register. 
This address must address a memory mapped on the AXI system bus. Following this operation, the channel is ready to accept new requests, as defined in the block repeated block modes above, or continue the transfer if TRGM 1 to 0 equals 1 1. The trigger source can be automatically changed when loading the CXTBR value. The TRGM and SWRM values must not be changed when TRGM 1 to 0 equals 1 1. The channel configuration or channel link address LAR must be in the AXI address space. LAR value must be aligned at a double word address, such as LAR 2 to 0 equals 0x0. This table describes the MDMA requests and their mapping to devices. An MDMA channel can be triggered by the end of transfer of the DMA1 stream. In response to this trigger, the MDMA can perform data transfer from SRAM D2 to D1 RAM, or reprogram the DMA1 zero flow for a new transfer. To enable the MDMA to efficiently offload the CPU, MDMA channels can be triggered by device interrupts to automate data exchanges and processing. Examples of peripheral triggers are described in this table. For each MDMA channel, an interrupt can be produced on the following events. Channel transfer completed. Block transfer completed. Block transfer repeat completed buffer transfer completed, or transfer error. The MDMA is active in run and sleep modes. DMA interrupts will wake the STM32H7 from sleep mode. In stop mode, the DMA is stopped and the contents of the DMA registers are retained. The DMA is powered down in standby mode and the DMA registers must be reinitialized after exiting standby mode.